Hello everyone, my name is Jolene Schaefer and I'm the Marketing Coordinator for SWK Technologies. I'd like to welcome you to our webinar, Accounts Receivable Metrics, See How Your Company Compares, by Matt Shanahan of Lockstep. A little housekeeping before we get started. Everyone has been placed on mute to keep the background noise down. However, you can submit any questions you have throughout the webinar. To submit a question, look for the question section in your GoToWebinar. We will answer all questions at the end of the presentation. We are recording this presentation and it will be distributed tomorrow to all attendees as well as to those who registered but were not able to attend. Please take a moment at the end of the presentation to answer our two-question survey. With that said, we appreciate you taking time out of your busy day to attend our webinar. We're here to help you get the most out of your software solutions and help you find an easier way to run your business by providing you software and industry knowledge, tools, and support whenever you need it. We've invited Lockstep here today because they are the industry leaders on AR automation. So whether you're here doing research for a new solution or you're just here to learn, we'd like to encourage you to ask any questions throughout the webinar. Lastly, as a quick reminder, SWK is constantly sharing important updates and software tips and tricks on our social media channels. So we encourage you to follow us on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Without further ado, I'll hand it over to Matt. Thank you, Tulane. Thank you for joining today. My name is Matt Shanahan. I'm the Chief Strategy Officer for Lockstep. Um, we do a quarterly benchmark report just regarding kind of effective AR automation strategies and you know how to pursue those. So we'd like to take you through the latest update that we have today. Before jumping into the benchmark, um, what we'll do in terms of an agenda is really talk about Lockstep for just a moment. Um, give you an overview and some background on our experience. Then we'll delve into what can you really manage in AR? So there's a lot of accounts receivable metrics. And it seems like an easy question, but it's really not as straightforward as you'd think. And so we'll walk through why that is. And then why we focus on a certain set of AR metrics that historically have really been overlooked. Um, what we'll do is then delve into the three main automation strategies that you can use to manage your AR. And with that as a, the stage set, we'll learn about the benchmarks for automation and what kind of impact it can have on reducing past due or reducing average days delinquent. A quick background on Lockstep. Lockstep is the maker of Anytime Collect. Anytime Collect is an AR automation solution. Anytime Collect makes it easier and faster for you to collect your cash. It also makes your bank balance bigger. And Anytime Collect is in use in over 20 industries by over 170 companies globally and has more than 10,000 users of the application. You can see some of the great brands that we serve here. We're also the leader in integration. So we extend this capability, so bringing AR automation to all of these different ecosystems, especially the Sage ecosystem, you know, deeply embedded with Sage 100, also Acumatica and other platforms. So whether it's on premises or in the cloud, our integration platform makes automation possible and we're expanding all the time. We're just recently adding integration also to salesforce.com to make collaboration between accounts receivable and sales easier. So let's hop in. It goes without saying there's a lot of pressure these days on every accounts receivable department. Now, the pressure is to collect cash. Uh, the current economic environment certainly set it up that way. And so managing that process plays a crucial role in reaching that objective. But can the collections performance really be managed? I mean, tactically managed. Our research suggests that it can. We talk to a lot of controllers and AR managers in various industries regarding which metrics they monitor and why. The discussion revealed a lot of metrics that key leadership finds to be effective. But which ones really matter? We looked at each metric individually and asked the question, can this metric be managed? Our criteria for quote unquote managing 
became that the manager could directly influence the metric by asking someone to do something differently. And as a result of that, the desired change in the metric would occur. Our research confirmed our suspicions that some numbers just can't be managed no matter how hard managers try, but some numbers can be managed. And so we'll be looking into that. And we'll also look into the fact that there's a gap in technology a lot of times that some of the most important metrics that need to be managed aren't available because of the, the technology that's in use. We found three classes of AR metrics, each with its own managerial value and purpose. At the highest level, the AR department um, are measuring what we call business results. Business results are metrics such as working capital and DSO. They represent the culmination of the AR efforts. As a manager, you know, as much as managers want to talk about managing DSO, business results are ultimately unmanageable. If a manager could directly, you know, control DSO, then every AR department would meet its targets. You know, you could tell your team, hey, we need to lower DSO. And your team would say, no problem, we'll lower the DSO now. But that doesn't happen. We also found there was a second kind of metric that, while not directly manageable, could be heavily influenced. Uh, we call those accounts receivable objectives. AR objectives are the specific targets that an organization asks an AR person or group to reach. You know, a good example is a monthly collections goal. But AR objectives are not directly manageable either. To meet the collections goal requires consent from the customer. I mean, they have to decide to pay you. And we all know that customers can have their own priorities or their own issues that are far outside your control. So while those objectives are important because they line up to the business results, inherently they're not manageable themselves. What AR professionals can control is what we call a third class of metric, which is really AR activities. These are the numbers that AR managers gather, such as number of collections calls, number of emails, number of conversations, percentage of invoices influenced. This is fairly tactical stuff, but it's the stuff that AR teams and their managers actually do. So this is the actual work of an AR team. AR activities are the metrics that can actually be managed. Want more collections calls each week? Make it happen. AR staff, want more email sent? Make that happen too. You might encounter process or compliance issues, but that's why you need AR automation. AR automation is the basis for managing collections performance. Of course, the other metrics are important, but those numbers are the lagging indicators whereas activities are the leading indicators. Business results and AR objectives today are the results of AR activities last month. If an AR team makes more calls in AR activity, then it will collect more cash in AR objectives. If more cash is collected, lower DSO and bigger bank balance will follow, which is the business result. So, the importance of activity management and understanding the activities becomes critical. And that's where there's been a, a benchmarking gap at, you know, to date. When we go out and look at some of the different benchmarking services, there's a lot of different ones that cover results such as DSO um, and payment behavior of customers. There's very little data available. Matter of fact, what we've seen is none on which activities and how much have the biggest impact on collections performance, i.e. your cash flow. You know, if you're a company looking to reduce your DSO, where do you start? There is no benchmark to evaluate yourself on that. We've been quietly working on building that benchmark service for our customers um, really over the last year. Uh, we had our first benchmark uh, in April, and this is our second one that we're coming out with. Um, and in doing so, we discovered a number of insights about how activities impact collections performance. And so, you know, as we go through this, first I wanna share with you 
kind of the current state of affairs in a manuals collection process. Then we'll look at the automated ones and the impact that you'll, the improvements that you'll see. So to understand these dynamics more, let's kind of dig into what happens in a manual process. As I mentioned, we work with a number of different companies. Um, one of the things that we do is we always benchmark what are their current operations before we implement our system? So we wanna have a before and after. Um, and that does go through the business results, but ultimately it gets down to the AR activities. How many activities are they currently doing and, and whatnot? And what we see you know, is the fact that it's a very manual process today. Um, well, what we've seen, you know, just to, as an example, to make a phone call, uh, there's prep time. You've got to gather a certain amount of information together, maybe from multiple different systems and double check everything before you make the call because you don't want to make a call and upset the customer with bad information. Um, you've got the actual call time with the customers. Those can be short, maybe just leaving a voicemail message, or they could be longer. You could be negotiating, you know, the actual payment terms that you're going to do. And then there's post-call administration. You have write-ups and reporting that you need to make sure that's going on. So that can take anywhere from 25 to 40 minutes per phone call. Now, it's not only phone calls that are done on a daily basis, also you know, emails are being sent out and other things. And so between the combination of voicemail, you know, calling and emails, about 40 to 60 outbound communications are done per day by a typical AR staff person. Um, this limited capacity, when you think about typically the number of companies out there or customers that you might have, means that less than 10% of your customers are being contacted after invoice presentment. So really it's invoice presentment, and then you're chasing the past due, 60 days past due and above because those have the biggest impact. And you know, as the Hackett Group reported, one of the biggest obstacles you know, to improving performance is um, adoption of accounting of technology by accounting departments. And that's because um, it's easy to see why most accounting de departments use Outlook and Excel or maybe Gmail and, and Google Sheets, you know, as their technology stack, right? So with no integration to the ERP, it means data is constantly being manually tr transcribed between emails and the ERP, right? So you're constantly typing in new stuff or maybe pulling stuff out and pasting it in. And with no automation, it means things like follow-ups, promise tracking, and dispute resolution is all manual, right? So you, you've got those in your Excel sheet and you're tracking it there, you're doing your aging in your Excel sheets, things like that. And then with no activity management, you know, there's no visibility into what got done today. You know, you can't look across everybody's outlook and say, what did you guys do? Um, so visibility isn't available and then that makes it hard to control. So this is sort of where, when, when we poll most organizations um, who have not implemented AR automation, they're doing this. And the problem is when you think about sales, sales has Salesforce, right? So they've got a um, sales automation solution to help them be more productive and manage all their activities. If you go into support, support has Zendesk, right? So they've got a system that helps them manage their activities and make sure the team is working effectively. Uh, if you go even into IT, they have a ticketing system typically called JIRA, where they can manage all the activities and who's doing what and everything else. But then you get to accounting and all you've got is Outlook and Excel. And the problem is that's really exposed some underlying conditions as a result of that. So we've all, there's been a massive migration to remote work um, as a result of the pandemic. And that reliance on Outlook and Excel is starting to really show through in a number of different ways. Um, first, the move to remote work exposed the problem of these manual processes. You know, the pandemic increased the workload because there's more uh, collections risk. All the traditional credit scores are out the window. So AR staff are now trying to contact as many customers as possible to assess collectability. 
you know, there's, you know, who do they call first? What are the priorities? Much of that decision making is up to the individual person. Each member starts the day reviewing their inbox uh, and manual aging reports make up their to-do list for the day. And they set out calling to ask for confirmation. Installment plans are becoming more common. And they need to extend payment terms and, and obtain promises. You know, all these confirmations, plans, extensions, and promises need to be recorded and tracked. But where? Like how? For the most part, it just really means more spreadsheets, lots of data entry, and no automation. And that's the problem of being built on Outlook and Excel. Remote work has also exposed the limits of manual reporting. What used to be weekly forecasting and reporting is now becoming daily. There's a growing requirement for AR staff uh, to have to do this, and that means more cut and paste assembly and email distribution. You know, how do you know who is working on what? What got done today? Did the team focus on the right thing? These questions can't be answered by walking around the room and polling. If reporting is manual, by the way, it takes away valuable time from, you know, collections activities as you're doing reporting up. Likewise, upper management is requiring more frequent forecasts. When forecast is also a manual process, it takes up even more time uh, that should be put towards customer conversations. So these are some of the dynamics that have come into play uh, really as a result of kind of the, the pandemic and what's been going on. So this is really then the kind of the basis of talking about AR automation strategies and doing benchmarks of, you know, how well do they work um, in pursuing, you know, uh, collections performance? Um, and then, you know, which strategies are most important and which ones will have the biggest impact? So there's three strategies that we think about, right, when we talk with customers and, and go through this. One is, automated customer communications, things like an onboarding when a new customer joins, how quickly do you send an email, giving them instructions of how to set up their account, where they should send inquiries to, all of that, uh, certainly presentment of invoices, but other transactional um, communications such as a reminder, hey, you know, you've still got an open balance, this is coming due, um, please you know, click here to pay or a past due notice, right? You know, suddenly it's gone past due rather than, you know, somebody on the AR team having to type that out manually should just get automatically triggered and sent. And then of course, things like a monthly statement, getting, getting those kind of compiled and sent out automatically are things that you can do. So that's, that's an example, it's not an exhaustive list, but it gives you a sense of some of the communications that can be automated, meaning that 100% of your customers can be communicated to on a timely basis uh, with the information they need to process your invoices. The next is really collections activity management. So think of this as just go replace Outlook and Excel with a system designed specifically for um, AR teams. And what that would provide, for instance, is an automated to-do list generation where they can say, hey, here's the next best activity to go do, whether it's a phone call, uh, send out an email, et cetera. And then activity tracking, rather than having to report you know, myself, the system is tracking what I'm doing and can let management know or anybody else know what's going on, including letting salespeople know what activity is taking place inside their account regarding collections. Um, automated assistance, as I, as I go to do these different activities, I want automation assistance. Uh, so uh, get the information I need to make this call. Don't make me chase it down. Make sure all the contacts I need are there. Um, uh, maybe transcribe the phone call directly. Automate some of my dialing. There's a whole set of things that makes the, allows the uh, AR team to focus really on the communication with the customer and the relationship with the customer uh, foremost. And then things like dashboards and reports that can come in and, and provide visibility. And the final way is also customer self-service. So there's a whole set of activities that you could probably get your customers to do rather than you having to do it yourself. One example is just payment. 
you know, giving the customers the ability to pay online so that you don't have to, you know, do cash application manually. Uh, that can be 100% automated that way. Um, being able to, rather than respond to an invoice request, allow them to access their invoices directly online. Any number of these things become powerful things that allow somebody to, you know, offload, you know, more administrative tasks from your collections team so they can focus on those key conversations. So those are the three strategies that we'll talk about as we go through these benchmarks now um, that looks at the way we impact cash flow. A little bit about the data and the analysis that we went that we did. The benchmark report is based on data from the last really 10 to 12 months. Um, and our platform takes and records a snapshot every day of the status of accounts receivable for every one of our customers. These snapshots are used to measure and report their metrics. Uh, the companies included in this analysis came from 18 different industries. And they range in size, there's a big you know, range of this from small, 1.4 million in revenue, to you know, fairly large, not, you know, not quite enterprise, but 1.4 billion in revenue. You know, the average revenue of the companies involved in this benchmark was 205 million. Um, and while some industries vary in their benchmark on financial metrics, uh, the impact that automation had was comparable. So we could look at those deltas. Um, as an example, service industry may have a lower DSO than distribution, but the impact of automated communication would be similar in both. Did it, did it lower both, right? Did that have an impact? And if so, as a percentage, what was that impact? And so because of that, we could, we could analyze the companies as a whole rather than industry by industry. The receivables that we analyzed covered 1.2 million individual accounts, um, which collectively during that period of time had 13.2 million invoices. Uh, there was a range of invoice values, anywhere from hundreds of dollars to over $130,000. Uh, because anytime collect functionality can be used individually or altogether, we were able to kind of break out individual impacts. For instance, we have some customers that do just automated communications only. Um, and so we could look at those differences. And we could also look at, as I mentioned, we benchmark customers prior to going live, so we can see post-implementation. And we have that view as well. So we could look at the pre and the post um, and get an understanding of what's going on. And that was really kind of our, our approach on looking at this. And let's, let's just jump in. So first, we examined the impact of automated communications. Um, these automated communications include, as I mentioned, reminders, statements, past due notices, et cetera. Uh, and when we compared, you know, especially pre and post implementation of automation and looked at companies who weren't using automation, you know, the average um, days delinquent was 39 days. Right? So it gives you a sense of, hey, you know, these are a lot of late payers. Um, after implementing the automation, what we found was that the average days delinquent dropped to 18. You know, that's an over, yeah, over 53% improvement, right? A reduction by that much. Um, and really what's interesting is in the new normal now, communication is a critical success factor. So to get the reach that you need uh, to all of your customers on communication, um, automation is a key factor for that. Um, without automated communication, you're just not able to make that reach. And even if you had been using automation before, um, what we're working with customers on is also adapting that to make it even more effective. Um, as an example, uh, because some people, you know, the increased collections risk, one of the triggers that we added into the communications was you know, whether to offer an installment plan proactively to customers and who might take up on that. And so having that built into the workflow and being able to look at it um, is an important thing. Now, other people are using, you know, other tactics, but, you know, that's a key thing is just, you know, communicating with customers to make that happen. 
This next benchmark really looks at the importance of the human touch. Um, we have an AR community that uh, meets on a biweekly basis, and we do roundtable discussions on a lot of different topics. Um, one of the uh, recent topics that we talked about was, you know, what people find rewarding about uh, working in accounts receivable. And it was interesting, two main factors dominated the discussion. One is all the individuals enjoy building relationships. They really value relationships. And the second is they like to help others, right? Because they, you know, in the midst of all this, helping people, you know, deal with cash flow problems and challenges and everything else and coming up with solutions because they've got their own challenges on the AP side, they found it's a, it's a really rewarding part of what they do. Um, and the data, it was interesting, the data really wore, uh, bore itself out in this way. In this chart, what you can see is um, automated communications is the one at the left, uh, where it shows that more than 60% of the customer outreach was done via automated communications. Um, an AR team-centric, so a collector-centric approach is the one on the right, which said that less than 40% of the customer outreach was using automated communication. So the majority of that was the AR teams calling or emailing. And in this case, you can see that the automated communications outperforms the collector-centric. And that's really because of the scale that we talked about. You know, are you able to touch every single customer? Uh, at the right time with the right messages, even if it's transactional in nature. Um, however, with the right mix of automated and collector communications, we saw the best performance with an over 50% reduction in past due. Um, and that's what you see here. And it was really that mix, you know, um, that would do it. And, you know, that mix is going to change for uh, different organizations, but that's why there was this range between 40 and 60, but it definitely had the best performance that we saw. Now, the previous benchmark looked at the mix of activities between automated communications and collector communications. This benchmark really looks at the number of communications per individual invoice to see what that impact uh, would be on past due. What we did is we split the companies up based on their average invoice amounts. Um, so you can see the buckets here, you know, those uh, where their average invoice was less than $1,000 um, in the different buckets all the way up to people whose average invoices was over $10,000. And then what we also did is we we broke up kind of into different um, buckets within each of those. The people who sent the most, you know, the top third, you know, sent um, things, and those that sent the least, the bottom third, and of course the middle third. Um, and what you see here is the percentage past due um, dropped as the uh, frequency of communication increased. Across every category in invoice value, we saw that trend. Right? So you can see that sort of graphically here. Um, and the drop was, you know, near or more than 50% improvement in all cases. Um, what that means is, you know, the, the need to free up as much time for AR teams to communicate with customers and using the right amount of automation and, and kind of collector-led communication is really the key to success. So again, the amount of communication and the mix are really important to sort of make happen. The final benchmark that we'll look at today is really looking at customer self-service. Customer self-service is a way of enabling uh, your customers to complete activities on their own rather than your AR team having to do that work. Um, yes, yeah, so a good example is can you resend the invoice? Well, if you, can, you should be able to just get that yourself. From what we heard in our AR community was the fact that, as a, one example, paper checks increase past due and average days delinquent. 
And so we decided to examine that, right? To kind of peel that back and see if that was true. So we examined the impact of accepting online payments where, um, on, you know, because the online payments are starting to gain, you know, a priority and a popularity uh, because people want to get rid of uh, paper checks from the new normal. And you can see the impact right here uh, because with online payments, um, there was a 14 day drop in average days delinquent and an 8% drop in past due. So other factors, you know, of how cu customer self-service reduces past due and average days delinquent is the fact that the customer has immediate access to the information they need to pay you, uh, whether it's PO statements or missing invoices. Um, and they can, and it takes out the barrier of having to, you know, kind of respond to their emails. So, you know, just the online payment, you know, turning that on or off has a dramatic impact. And then customer self-service overall, we saw have an impact as well. So through these benchmarks, I hope one of the things that you can see is, you know, you want to think about, are you doing the right things to get paid? Um, one of the right things to do is to leverage automation. We, we talked about it through a number of different things. Communicating to all customers, not just the ones that might be past due, um, is critical. And communicating throughout the entire life cycle of the, the invoice aging. Maximize your team's outreach, right? It's, um, you know, we think about it as, you know, automation assistance for the team. You know, get rid of the, you know, chasing down information, administration and reporting, you know, all of those manual activities, you know, or manual tasks that slow down the conversations with customers. So maximize your team's outreach and impact, and then move customers online. If you're able to leverage these three strategies, you'll see a dramatic improvement in your collections performance and scale, you know, as, as you return to growth. So with that, we will open it up for questions and answers. Um, you know, one of the things I'll highlight is we do have a free AR automation benchmark ebook available at anytimecollect.com. It's on our homepage. Um, and you can kind of, um, you can find it there. Thank you, Matt. We'll now open it up for questions. If you have any questions, please enter them into the question section of your GoToWebinar. We'll give that a minute in case any come through. And just a reminder, everyone, we do have a subject matter expert here. This is a great opportunity to have your questions answered in real time. And it does look like we have a couple that came through, Matt. The first is, where can we access this full benchmark report and future reports as they came out, come out quarterly? Yeah, great question. Um, so as I mentioned, if you register for the bench or the ebook on online, we will send you quarterly updates. Um, so just feel free to do that. We also um, do provide an opportunity assessment. So if you'd like us to, you know, sort of look at your current metrics, um, which ones you're using and, and kind of how they rank relative to, you know, using other techniques, we'd be happy to do that. We have another, how quickly do companies typically see an ROI like the ones presented? You know, it's nice as um, in the case of Anytime Collect, it's an add-on solution to your existing ERP. Um, and the deployment of that is anywhere from four to eight weeks to go completely um, live. There's there's variables in that, but you know generally uh, within eight weeks you're live, um, and then you start seeing results right away. Now they they sort of ramp up over time, but within about um, a month after go live, you start to see the initial impact. Um, within two months, um, and then we see kind of a you know, a ramping all the way through the third month. From there is when, you know, people start to maybe say, hey, I want to add some additional communications, refinements, et cetera. And we work with the, them on that if, they, if that's what they pursue. But really, you, you see an impact pretty quickly. Wonderful. 
Well, I think that's all the questions that have come through. So thank you so much, Matt, for your informative presentation and for taking the time to be here today. Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Have a wonderful rest of your day.